So, we continue with the discussion of the DNA and the RNA structures and you see here as I said the ribose ring or the, or the 5 membered ring is the important uh, element. What are the elements of the, of the DNA structure? Well, the phosphate backbone is one and the second thing is the sugar ring and the sugar ring as I said is a 5 membered ring here. Now, we have to define the structure of the sugar ring. So, to and that is an important element. We have to define the structure of the phosphate backbone, the various angles which are present here, the, the torsion angles which are there, we will co come to that. And then you have this sugar ring. The sugar ring structure is determined by these torsion angles which are indicated here. So, nu 0, nu 1, nu 2, nu 3, nu 4, not all of them are very independent. The torsion angle is defined in this manner. So, the nu 0 torsion angle is defined as the angle around this bond here, rotation angle around this bond which defines the relative positions of C4 prime and C2 prime, okay. C4 prime, O4 prime, C1 prime, C2 prime and the central bond around the central bond there is this torsion rotation angle. So, these are also called as dihedral angles because these define the angle between the two planes formed by the, these groups C4 prime, O4 prime, C1 prime these atoms form one plane and O4 prime, C1 prime, C2 prime these form another plane and it is the angle between these two planes that defines the dihedral angle or it is also the torsion angle around this. So, likewise you have this in U1 which is O4 prime, C1 prime, C2 prime, C3 prime and then you have nu 2 which is C1 prime, C2 prime, C3 prime, C4 prime and nu 3 C2 prime, C3 prime, C4 prime, O4 prime and you have so nu 4 C3 prime, C4 prime, O4 prime, C1 prime. But however, notice that all these torsional angles are not independent, they are dependent on each other because the ring is closed, ring is closed and then there are also important you can see uh, do physical chemistry calculations one can see how many degrees of freedom are there. So, you have you have the um, in a typical one you have the four bonds and three, three bond angles and you have two torsion angles. Typically two torsion angles are sufficient to describe this, but then once you have the ring closure then you actually have only one torsion degrees of freedom left and that is what is indicated in this picture here. You see these ones are all related all these torsion angles are related in a particular manner. And the one degree of freedom which is there which is called as the P when one defines this P this is called as the pseudo rotation angle. The pseudo rotation angle depending upon the value of the pseudo rotation angle. So, you have different kinds of um, uh, uh, new eyes here and this new eyes the individual torsion angles is, is given by tau m this defines the maximum distortion from the plane of the ring how much a particular item is going out. So, this is the kind of a quantity number which indicates how much is the a particular item going out of the plane, what is the maximum value. But this will have a certain constraint because if the bond angles and the bond distances are well fixed and they cannot be changed too much and therefore, this actually is a kind of a well defined element. This is typically of the order of 38 degree. Okay. And then the cosine the P is a value which can take values from 0 to 360 and i minus 2 delta, delta is a fixed number like 144, you put for a, uh, put delta is equal to 2 and keep varying i for to through different values then you will see by uh, uh, you get different kinds of sugar geometries, you depending upon the value of p you get few different geometries and all of these are indicated in the kind of a circle because of the p can go from 0 to 360 or you can say it goes from 0 to minus 180 or plus 180 and so on and so forth. Okay. And these are uh, typically indicated how what is the kind of a structure that we will get these are all got certain labels that is the what is the kind of a um, uh, structure the sugar ring has got. And here you see if you make a plane of um, uh, a particular thing put the three atoms in a plane C1 prime O4 prime C4 prime if you put them in a particular plane what is the disposition of the 2 prime and the 3 prime atoms with respect to that plane and then you will get different and the C4 prime is always on one side. So, you get different kinds of um, uh, structures for the sugar ring. So, in this case the 2 prime is above the plane of the ring and the 3 prime is below the plane of the ring and the O4 prime is here, the O4 prime is always there only. And in this structure the 3 prime is above the plane of the ring and the 2 prime is below the plane of the ring. So, here you see both the things are above and below. So, you have 
the extent of the things which are above and below. So, you have the 3 prime above 2 prime below, but the degree is more. So, 3 prime less 2 prime more the degree is less and therefore, you get different kinds of structures which are um, uh, indicated by typical CN. This group of structures which are indicated where the 2 prime is above the plane of the ring these are called as S conformations or called the south and this is the south here. This is the south in this in this circle this below this um, um, central line this is the south and this is the north. So, all those conformations which are below here these are called as the south conformations the S conformation and these are characterized by the 2 prime atom going above the plane of the ring and these are called as C2 prime endo if it is above it is called as endo anything which is below it is called as exo. And therefore, you have here in these structures then you have C when it is um, this calls in the south you have the C2 prime endo the C2 prime endo is, is this one here ok. So, all of these are C2 prime endo and to the different degree how much is the 3 prime below. So, you get what we will say here C2 prime endo C3 prime x. So, but the degree of the 3 prime which is below or the degree to which this one is above that determines the different positions along the in, in this circle here. Therefore, you see here this is 0 to 180 on this side similarly what we have the north conformations it is a 3 prime which is above above the central line ok and this is a 3 prime endo ok. Therefore, this is a 3 prime endo here and if you take the p value how the p value is changing. So, this goes from 0, 36, 72 ok this becomes 90. So, at this 90 the O4 prime endo now the other things becomes the O4 prime is actually going out of the plane and that is that is not shown there ok. So, the O4 prime becomes above the plane and put the other 3 items in the in the in the plane of the ring in a plane in a particular plane and then you go you have the twisted conformations they are described as endo conformations twisted conformations twisted means both the things are um, above and below but to different extents it is not only one. So, you have in one particular case then only one which is all the four atoms are in a plane and only one atom is above the plane you can also think about that and those ones are these O4 prime endos O4 prime endo or O4 prime exo four atoms in a plane and one of them is above and all other ones are kind of um, twisted to a certain uh, extent ok which is closer to this to 180 this is called a C2 prime endo and then you have C3 prime exo here and so on so forth. So, you see P is an important parameter which determines the nature of the sugar ring and the sugar ring varies from one um, nucleotide unit to the second nucleotide unit it can vary it can vary in the DNA and the RNA. Why it can vary? Because the C2 prime here in the case of DNA has 2 hydrogens here whereas in the RNA it has 1 hydrogen and 1 oxygen and therefore this can create a kind of a steric differences and interaction differences between the oxygens here and between the one nucleotide unit to the next nucleotide unit. Therefore, this sugar ring can have different conformations. Indeed, you will find as we will show later that in the case of DNA this sugar ring adopts the south conformations by and large the C2 endo conformations is called as C2 or prime endo conformations and in the RNA they adopt what is called as the C3 prime endo conformations and that primarily comes because of the oxygen at this point. Okay. So, now you see what it reflects in the case of uh, there are different kinds of uh, structures and, uh, uh, and these are classified uh, as A, B, C, D, E in the DNA canal. Now, the, uh, the previous the fiber diffraction data the fiber diffraction data could not give you any more detail about this. Now, how do we get this information? So, you can use tools like NMR or crystallography and people then actually synthesize small DNA segments to get more details into the structures of the individual nucleotide units or short segments of the DNA segments because this is a repetitive in it. So, therefore, you can say if you take a short segment of the DNA segment or the RNA segment you might be able to think what is the kind of a structure which is propagating through the through the entire, poly, uh, entire polymer and that is what was done and you they came out with the different kinds of DNA structures and those ones are indicated here. And this is the stereo picture 12 base pair of A DNA this is a particular kind of a DNA structure where it is an A DNA 
okay. And this is the structure of this molecule deoxy GG TA TA CC okay. And this is the 5 prime end here and this is the 3 prime end here. The sequence goes as GG TA TA CC. This is how the DNA sequences are written okay. And here you see the structure has um, a certain kind of um, a fat is a fat structure and this the, ang the base pairs are tilted with respect to the axis of the DNA axis of the double helix. The axis of the double helix may go like this and the base pairs are tilted in this half they are tilted like this in the top half they are tilted like this and that typically the, the fiber diffraction data had shown that one complete turn of the DNA. So, what is the complete turn? So, you go from here to here like this and then you come to the beginning and that is one complete turn from here to your one complete turn. And the fiber diffraction data had said that there can be approximately 10 nucleotide 10 base pairs in a particular segment okay. And depending upon the structures of course, there can be slightly more and uh, also um, in the later segments which have been discovered. Uh, therefore, you have this a particular half and this particular half and this structure is called as the ADNA because this um, DNA molecule has the structures which are very reminiscent of the 3 prime endo sugar geometry and therefore this is called as the ADNA. And the normally what is present in the um, 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 larger probability in your solution inside the cell is what is called as the BDNA and this is the BDNA. And this is the structure obtained by uh, um, a larger DNA sequence under the different conditions and depends upon the hydration level also inside your structure I mean in a, inside your um, DNA a crystal how much water molecules are there. So, it also depends upon those ones and this is the structure of a, a 12 mer uh, DNA segment which has the base sequence C, C, A, A, C, G, T, G, uh, T, T, G, G. Okay. Notice here this is self complementary. What is the meaning of self complementary? So, if I write here the sequence C, C, A, A, C, G, T, T, G, G. Now, this is a 5 prime end and this is a 3 prime end, right. Now, what I do, I write the same sequence here back C, C. A A C G then I have T T G G. So, this is the 3 prime and this is the 5 prime. You see I have written the same sequence twice. So, therefore, this is called as the self complementary sequence and um, therefore, one molecule which is there it naturally it goes into the form of a double helical structure like this. And this is easier to work with such molecules otherwise you will have to generate two different kinds of sequences and then to make a duplex structure. So, this molecule was chosen though it is automatically forms a duplex structure as a most stable form ok. So, this is self complementary. Okay. And this molecule the structure showed uh, was like this. And it is little bit more uh, uh, elongated you can see compared to the uh, RNA molecule and the ADNA this structure is called as the BDNA ok. And it has clearly two different kinds of grooves one can identify two groups there is one groove which goes like this which is called as the major groove and there is another groove which is the smaller groove which is called as the minor groove. So, there are two different kinds of grooves described for the DNA structure. So, the, the, this amount depending upon the amount of space which is available and you have a groove which is uh, defined ok. And the base pairs open in the two different grooves one side of the base pair opens in the major groove other side of the base pair opens in the minor groove ok. So, that is when you explicitly write the base pairs and that is what uh, one sees. Now, this is the third type of DNA segment and in no, naturally ok now let us go behind here. Now, you see these ones are right handed helices here you see this is one right handed helix. The Delhi helix goes like this ok. This is the right handed helix and the other one is coming in the opposite direction. So, that is also a right handed helix. Two right handed helices are coming like this and then they are held together by this uh, hydrogen bonds in the base pairs ok. 
So, in this BADNA as well as in ADNA we have two right handed helices which are going which are intertwined and two form base pairs and that is but there are differences in the structural elements how fast is the how much is the distance between one base pair to another base pair typically it is about 3.64 uh, angstroms here. So, therefore, if I take 10 base pairs you will have the one end of one complete um, uh, this turn of the DNA is about 34 angstrom. This is what I used earlier for the calculation as to what is the total length of the DNA segment. Okay. And therefore, you have this the unit rise is 3.4 angstroms and then you have a 34 angstroms in the DNA. In the case of RNA is slightly smaller and the number of units also is, uh, is, a, is given the same the height is, is slightly smaller. Okay. Now, this is another kind of a DNA structure which was discovered this actually came quite late this came somewhere in the 19 uh, close to the 1980s 1979 and this is called as the Z DNA or the Z DNA and this actually is a left handed helix ok. This is not right handed helix this is the left handed helix and this very characteristic feature of this is that this is it is not a monomer which is repeating here but it is a dimer. So, the dimer structure is the basic unit of this repeating unit and this is a left handed DNA structure and it occurs only in such point of sequences which are rich in CG segments. CG segments CG. initially it was not clear whether it is actually biologically present or not this is called as the zigzag, zigzag nature of the of the phosphorus uh, phosphate residues that you can see. So, this is also that is why it is called as ZDNA it is zigzag nature. It is not a proper helix as you can see in the in the case of B DNA or the A DNA, but this is a zigzag zigzag nature and the um, uh, dinucleotide is the repeating unit unlike the uh, mononucleotide which is the repeating unit in the A and the B DNA and in the dinucleotide the two units are different structural features and that is an important uh, factor how they become different. And these are typically observed in very high concentration of uh, whenever there is high concentration of salt and why did they do it of course just um, curiosity and they discovered this and then of course it became an important uh, point. Okay. So, here is the summary of all of these uh, DNA segments the structures of the different DNA segments. So, here you have the A DNA then you have the B DNA and this is the crystal structure which are these are these are from the model. Okay, a DNA this small a which is here this indicates from whatever the build model they built the Watson and Crick these are from fibers fiber diffraction data and these are from single crystal structure uh, GGCC GGCC this is also unit is a self complementary sequence and this forms an a DNA the B DNA this form which is there CG CG A A T T C G C G this is also self complementary sequence because if you write in the similar re reverse way you will find it is the duplex. And the Z DNA is as I said um, CCGGC that was the structure which was there and it is a dinucleotide which is repeating unit here. You have the C residues and the G residues they have different structures the individual units are different structures. Now what are the structures here? What are these alpha beta gamma delta epsilon these ones these are the torsion angles along the backbone of the DNA. So, you have this backbone phosphodiester linkages all over there and that is the various 6 torsion angles which are present along the phosphodiester uh, backbone. And this chi is the angle which connects the sugar ring to the base, sugar ring to the base that is the C1 prime nitrogen that bond the torsion angle around, the, around that bond that actually defines what is the orientation of the base with respect to the sugar ring and that angle is called as chi torsion angle. And you notice here these have certain ranges of values typical ranges of values by and large. So, these ones the alpha is around between minus 50 to minus 75 and B DNA it has minus 41 this is slightly lower compared to these ones and the B uh, the beta angle this is 172 to 175 and here in the B DNA it is smaller 136 and the gamma and delta these are along the backbone. So, along the polypeptide backbone you have this different torsion angles there. So, if I want to draw here this is the CH2 this is the phi prime this goes to the oxygen here this is the phi prime then I have the C4 prime the C3 prime then the O3 prime. 
okay then you have the CH2 again this is the five of the other end okay and then you have the P here then you have the O here again and your sugar ring is is here this goes to the O here C1 prime C2 prime and this is connected to this and this angle is the delta torsion angle there okay and this is the uh, gamma and this is the beta and this is the alpha and this angle is the epsilon okay and this is your xi and the one which connects to the C1 prime to this on there that is the chi that one angle which is not there is no space here and this goes this is the this is the chi here okay this is the phi prime again CH2. So therefore you have this alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon and xi. So these are the 6 torsion angles what you have uh, in this here okay and how these values are changing and of course there is also people did a DIA and DNA, RNA and decamer and of course this is a mixture of the DNA and RNA and this has different kinds of torsion angles here the values are indicated there. And the ARNA, ARNA is uh, the sugar ring is more C3 prime endo here, there is a sharp contrast and what it reflects, which angle reflects the sugar ring here, this uh, by and large it is in the delta because the delta is in the sugar ring, C4 prime, C3 prime that is part of the sugar ring and so it is reflected in the delta torsion angle how these ones are different. Okay, you see, see here the A DNA has 7991 and the B DNA has 130 uh, between 120 to 140. So therefore this is a quite characteristic and the Z DNA has alternating this and this. So you have the C residues has this C2 prime endo and the G residues has the so called C3 prime endo. So if the delta E is around the 7990 that is the C3 prime endo structure and if it is around 120 to 140 that is the C2 prime endo structure. So therefore in the Z DNA you see the C residues and the G residues have different sugar geometries. So one of them has a C2 prime endo kind of a thing, other one has a C3 prime endo kind of a string. Okay. And the beta torsion angle is mostly around the trans value and except for this particular one here it is 136 otherwise it is mostly around the 180 value roughly. And similarly this is the gamma is roughly around the 40 between so called the gauche conformation except for here the G residues in the Z DNA and this goes into the trans area. So this is minus 169 is like the trans area all of these ones are so called gauche conformations here close to less or more and things like that okay. So this is how the various structures now all this information has come from the single crystal structures of sort DNA segments okay. Now there is also one should describe it what about the base pairs, base pairs are they all parallel to each other or they are different from one another, the base pairs can differ to and you have to describe what is the relative orientations of the bases in the base pairs. So you can define that in with different parameters here, so these are the various parameters which are used to describe the base pairs. I told you that the base pair which is there on one side of that is the minor groove, other side is the major groove. So typically the, the base pairs open on the two sides because these are in the interior of the double helix and they open on the two sides of the. Uh, double helix. So one side is the major groove, other side is a minor groove. Okay. So and now you see here it is a 5 prime to 3 prime it is going here, this is 5 prime to 3 prime and the base pairs are held together like this. Okay. And now are these in the same plane or they can be treated? Are, are they parallel to the orientation with respect to the uh, double helical axis or are they tilted with respect to each other? Various kinds of parameters can be described here. What is the orientation with respect to the axis of this? Here it is perpendicular, perpendicular to the helical axis. Here it is slightly tilted in one dimension, one direction, okay. This tilted with respect to what? So this particular axis along this. Now here it is tilted with respect to the other axis, okay. So there is a rotation here, this is indicated by the rotation here. You indicate a rotation, consider this as a planar, planar one. And then the whole uh, um, base pair is the plane and you take a rotation around this axis therefore this becomes like this. 
Now you take a rotation around this axis it becomes like this ok. So therefore you can describe the orientation of this base pair using this one, one particular parameter that is when these are all parallel if they are parallel. Now but they whether they are all exactly in the same uh, pair like this or there is a small opening here ok. So you can again describe these ones here there is an opening with respect to this axis they are two bases are like this or the two bases are like this or the two bases are like this. So this is the different torsion this is the parameter which is called as the kappa here and you have different these are labeled by different uh, parameters and you can describe this as within the same base pair how they are oriented with respect to each other the two bases are. Now, you can also describe the relative orientation of two base pairs consecutive base pairs. To consecutive base pairs if you look at this two consecutive base pairs with a rotation around this particular bond or this particular axis will displace the two uh, base pairs in this manner ok. So they are not exactly talk, uh, sitting on top of each other but slightly displaced with respect to each other their planes ok. Now, if they are angled like this then difference is called as the roll, this is called as the twist, this angle is called as the twist, this angle is called as the roll and this angle is called as the tilt. So you dif dis differentiate these different parameters with the by different um, um, uh, names. So you one of them you call as a twist, this is called as the roll, this is called as the tilt and similarly here you call them as opening and this is the propeller and this is the buckle. So here also you inclination these ones are called as uh, tip this is uh, inclination and this is the, the coordinate x coordinate frame in the same indicating the coordinate frame and all of those ones are described here in a little bit more explicit manner. So you have the, uh, the sum summarize so you have the minor groove on this side and the major groove on this side. So if the base pair is base pair is like this you draw an axis like this to through this through the center of the base pair and then you have a vertical one and you have an axis like this. You define x, y, z these three axes with respect to the base pair and you can define the positions of all of these groups with res as rotations with respect to these three these three axes there and that is the called this called as the one is called as the slide and then you have the uh, shift. So how they are shifted with respect to the uh, center ok. So whether it is exactly going through the center or it is shifted with respect to that. So this one is shifted so this is a kind of a slide and this is a shift. So these are the different parameters which are used to describe the orientations of the base pairs in the same uh, in, in the plane and so you have uh, so many parameters to describe the structure of the DNA segment. So you have the sugar geometry on one hand then you have the torsion angles along the polypeptide backbone and then you have the base pair orientations with respect to each other and whether they are in the same plane or they are slightly tilted with respect to each other and how are the stacking whether the base pairs are stacking exactly on top of each other or they are slightly different from one another. So these are the various parameters all this information has come because one could obtain high resolution structures of small DNA segments. And this is taken from this uh, paper of R. A. Dickerson. This was this published in 1989. So this is the description of the individual base pairs here. Average helix parameters for the major DNA conformations. Okay, we need not go into the details of these numbers here, but this is a, a kind of an indicator as to what sort of values are there for the different um, parameters. The characterizing the DNA structure in the different DNAs. So depending upon the small variations which are present so different kinds of labels have been given for the different DNAs. We talked about the ADNA, BDNA but there are also some variations which occurred and they led to what are called as the CDNA, DDNA, TDNA. Then you also have the ZDNA which you also described in major detail and then you have the ARNA and A prime RNA. These ones are the RNA segments all others are the DNA segments. These are only minor variations with respect to the major ones. The ones which are by and large available in the, um, in the natural sequences are the BDNA and the ADNA and even there the, the RNAs are mostly in the A form and the DNA is in the B form. 
and this depends on also on the, the extent of um, hydration, how much is the water content depending upon that you get slightly different structures. Okay. And this is the continuation of the same. So, what sort of uh, parameters are there for the uh, base pairs, orientations of the base pairs in the and this is for the Z DNA and those ones were for the uh, A, B, D and C and D etc. And if since in the Z DNA you have different things for the two different steps, the C, G steps are different. Therefore, you have different parameters here for the two things. So, in other words, we need to characterize this kind of details for the structure when we want to calculate the structures of the of the molecules and uh, crystallography has been used and NMR also has been used and we will see more what kind of structures have been determined by the um, uh, NMR data and these happen in the solution. Okay. So, this has become possible with the various kinds of NMR experiments and certain algorithms which have been developed. So, I think I think we can stop here.